We'll revisit Irving's hidden gem, Captain Nemo's submarines. We'll take a look at the next generation of computer coders and find out what happens in the eye of a hurricane. All this and more coming up about town. Hello everyone, and welcome to About Town. I'm Tyler Rouse. And I'm Marshall Baldwin. We're part of the summer intern team here at ICTN. With some help and guidance, we were able to create this show, and we learned a lot along the way. One thing that I learned a whole lot is that, you know, TV is a whole lot different from onstage acting. And throughout high school, I did stage acting most of my life, so doing news is a whole lot different, a whole lot different. Uh, than any other acting that I've ever done. Well, it was really cool for me to go out and actually report on stories, because I want to be a broadcast meteorologist. But it's really interesting to be able to go out and report and make a story. Yeah. Well, we are so glad you decided to join us for the special edition of About Town. As always, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know if there's a community event you'd like to promote on the show or a story you'd like to see us cover. You can email us at ictn at cityofirving.org or connect with us on social media. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. Young women from all over Irving gather at Valley Ranch Library to take part in a coding course that aims to close the gender gap in the tech field. Let's take a closer look at this session of Girls Who Code. It's pretty quiet in here. But there's some intense work going on. Welcome to a session of Girls Who Code. Here at the Valley Branch Library, this computer science course is the result of months of planning. The library's actually been really interested in trying to get this program started for a long time, um, and we finally got the funding to do it. And Amanda reached out to me because they wanted to start a chapter here in Valley Ranch, and so that's how I got started. So we contacted the Girls Who Code program, and once they okayed us to start it, we jumped right in. Amanda King and Nalan Mehra are facilitators and mentors at this session of Girls Who Code. Their goal? To provide an environment for young women to be able to have a safe environment to learn and have a bond of sisterhood as well. The girls here at this session came for all sorts of reasons. Well, I came across this and I decided let's do it. My mom was uh, searching about it. I was looking through a calendar for Rally Ranch. But they all wanted one thing. They want to learn how to code. The girls here are learning different coding languages at various levels. JavaScript, CSS, and even HTML. The girls at this session were already putting their knowledge to use. I'm trying to create a travel web page. I'm making a web page about the coolest creatures. And we're becoming more confident about their coding abilities. It's not difficult, it's easy. Girls Who Code is a nationwide nonprofit organization created in 2012 with the goal of closing the gender gap in technology. Well, we think it's really, really important that this is a girls-focused program because um, the coding and computer stuff is such a male-dominated area of work. Girls are five times less likely to consider a technology-related career than their male counterparts, and less than a quarter of computer science degrees are awarded to women. However, Girls Who Code is already making a difference. They have really high statistics for girls that were in these classes that eventually go on to major in STEM, um, STEM fields and go on to careers and such. Classes are held at the Valley Ranch Library every other Saturday. We're really, really happy that we were able to get this started here. For About Town, I'm Marshall Baldwin. To learn more about the organization, go to girlswhocode.com or visit the Valley Ranch Library's website to enroll in the course. Teens have a lot to say if you ask the right questions. We talked with a group of teens at the recent Poolside Jam at the Center Park Pool, and we'll hear from them throughout the show. Up first, here's what teens like most about their hometown. What's your favorite thing about Irving? Ooh. Honestly, Center Park. I would say this pool. What's your favorite part about this place? Being able to go swimming with my friends. It's a fun place to meet people, hang out. In the pool. It's sunny, great pool, great friends, nice people. I guess the people, they're pretty cool, I guess. The friendly places, you know, that's for kids and adults. Mm -hmm. And then there's like the new freeway. Mm -hmm. It's getting it's getting better. Yeah. Looking nice. There's areas where it's safe and it's safe to have friends over. Favorite thing about Irving. Well, since I've been here about eight years, um, 
I like how it's like a little small town, you know, everyone knows everyone. It's kind of small, so like you kind of know everyone. And what's your least favorite thing about Irving? <laughs> you know everyone. <laughs> and what's your least favorite thing? It's hot. <laughs> Supplies for Success has been a citywide project for over a decade to help distribute school supplies to Irving Independent School District students. Executive Director of Irving Schools Foundation, Crystal Scanio, and Pastor Ephraim Figueroa are here to tell us more about Supplies for Success. So, welcome to both of you. Thank you. So, Thank for you. our viewers who don't know, what is Supplies for Success? Supplies for Success is our annual event that we have that we host this year actually going to host about 7,500 students where we give them school supplies, but we also give them opportunity to learn about resources that are available to them in our community. Um, they have other fun things like dental checks and vision checks and... Um, also, we kind of last year started this initiative to make it fun. We say education is fun. We just not want these kids to come to school and say, get, give me a backpack, let's go. No, and get a backpack, go and have fun because going to school is very fun. Absolutely. So what's one of the main reasons people can contribute? What are, what's one of the main ways that people can contribute to this cause? Our school supply uh, donation range is the whole month of June and July. And then we also take cash and monetary donations throughout the year. Uh, one of the things a lot of people think of is, yes, we definitely need school supplies for the start of school, but we also take school supplies throughout the year. We have teachers that come to us that say, I'm spending my own money on my own pocket, and they're fine with it usually, mm -hmm. but we're not fine with that. We want to make sure they have everything they need. So we need a constant supply of school supplies throughout the year, and they can make donations to the Irving Schools Foundation to benefit school supplies throughout the year. So, Pastor Figueroa, how did you get involved in Supplies for Success? Well, I, I realized that 70% of the kids that we're serving are Hispanics. So I speak Spanish, and I see there was a great opportunity to be there and serve them because most of them were coming but they were not, uh, they were understanding all what we were trying to do for them. So I was kind of in the midst of the, of the event, driving all these kids and telling them what we're doing, how we're serving them. And that really was exciting me, kind of changing Spanish, English all the time. So it was a good, good, that's one of the ways that I connected with this event. This year, I heard that you guys boosted the amount of kids by a thousand compared to last year. So. Looking forward to this coming up here in the future, what are your goals? What, what do you want to happen? Well, unfortunately, our population continues to need our support. And I wish that we could say that we need less and less, but we actually need more and more, which is why we need the city of Irving to help us mm. in every way. So this year, where can they drop off their donations and how long can they donate? They have until August 10th, and they can donate uh, via my office, the Irving Schools Foundation office. We're located in the Irving ISD Administration Building, or they can always go to our website and donate a monetary donation as well. Thank you so much for both of you being here. Thank you, Thanks guys. for having us. Thank you. Clear the Shelters is a nationwide event, but did you know that it all started in Irving? Corey Price joins us with the details. So, Corey, this is your fifth year doing this uh, event. And so how did this small little initiative turn into this nationwide um, shelter project? I think it all happened because people really are excited about animals and the human-animal bond and having a relationship with a dog or a cat. So when we did it the first year all over um, North Texas, it gained attention nationally, especially on social media. It went viral on social media that first year. So uh, how do you actually go and adopt a pet? What's the procedure for it? It's pretty easy. People who come on Clear the Shelters Day need to make sure they bring their ID because they will uh, be signing a contract that says, yes, I want to take this animal home. And um, just be prepared for uh, a lot of different people to be there and get there early if they have a specific pet in mind, for so sure. So what's the turnout every year? You know, we usually have a line all the way from the front of the building around to the dog park, which is on the side of our campus. Um, so we usually have hundreds of people there, and it's great because it helps us get all the animals adopted. Well, uh, 100 people come out and adopt a pet during this time of the year. Why, why is now the perfect time to adopt a pet? Why? 
why do you do this at this time of the year? Well, we do it because the shelters are typically very full of animals this time of year, but I would say that any time of year is a great time to yeah. adopt a pet. So um, during the summer months, the shelters across the nation are more full because um, animals typically breed in the spring, and so those animals that were born in the spring are now old enough to be adopted. So this is just the time of year when we have the most animals, which is a great time to have an event like this. So. During the summertime, is the most busy time for you guys? Is oh, definitely. No doubt. Um, we get, you know, dogs stay pretty stable. We get a little bit of a spike in dogs in the summer months, but we really see an increase in cats during the summer months. So NBC5 is actually going to be here at the event. Yes, they're going to do a live show from 9.30 to 10.30, and then they'll be live streaming the rest of the day. Thank you so much, Corey, for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, well, stop by the Animal Care Campus anywhere uh, on August 18th from 9.30 to 5 to find yourself a lifelong companion. For a change in About Town, here is Marshall Baldwin with our week's weather report. So tell us, Marshall, how hot is it out there? Well, Tyler, it is hot outside. Highs today were in the upper 90s with a couple clouds in the sky keeping us away from those 100 plus days we know all too well in Texas summers. Now the reason for these blistering temperatures is something called the heat dome. Usually the jet stream dips down towards North Texas, which brings cooler Canadian air and maintains fair air quality. However, sometimes in the summer, this jet stream lifts north, removing the source of northern air. This lets stagnant air sit in place, eventually causing air to sink. Since altitude determines the temperature of the air, this creates a warming effect. This warm air creates a heat dome, which leads to temperatures 5 to 10 degrees above normal. Now, looking at current conditions, there's a high pollen count in the air, so those of you with allergies will certainly feel a bit sniffly heading into the weekend. As for the extended forecast, it is looking like more of the same. Hot and dry, even climbing back into the hundreds going into next week. The first chance we have for rain is over a week away on Saturday. Have you ever stood in a thunderstorm? Our next guest has stood in a hurricane, lots of them. Hi Jay, welcome to the show. So I've heard that everyone has a weather story. How did you get involved in storm chasing? I have always in my whole life been fascinated with weather and especially storms. And so I'd be out in the backyard, even as a small kid, and all of a sudden you look up there and there's a big old black cloud coming. And I just looked at it and thought, now that's really cool. And then here comes the heavy rain and the lightning. And so anyway, one thing led to another. And uh, all of a sudden I started thinking, watching TV and looking at the hurricane models and what they were talking about and them coming in and, and then all of a sudden I thought, you know, I, th I think I need to experience one of those to see what they're really all about. And so I did and it just continued to grow. You've said that there's an art to storm chasing. What are some of the tricks that you use to so accurately predict where the storm is going to go? Well, I rely on you guys, you weather guys, to tell me where I need to be. But uh, yeah, I, I chase only hurricanes. I don't chase the tornadoes. I've got, I have friends that do that and they'll chase all spring along and never see one. Well, when a hurricane's coming, I'm going to see one. You know it's coming. Yeah, and so you, we know, because you guys are so good at what you do, we know basically where they're coming in. So if I know it's a Gulf Coast hurricane, it's gonna be somewhere between Louisiana and Florida. Okay, so I know, so I just get down there. And then there's an art to getting in the eye of the hurricane because that is what counts with me. I, I want to be in the eye wall because that's the strongest winds. And so the art of that is, okay, so the hurricane is predicted to come into Gulfport, but they predict that maybe 12 hours out. Well, as the hurricane starts to come in, well, it's still moving sometimes east or west. And so what I have to do is while I'm in the hurricane, adjust my position so I can catch up with the eye wall. And there's been often times while the hurricane's coming in with maybe just it's not a hurricane quite yet, but 50 or 60 mile an hour winds with rain just pouring in, I may have to travel east or west, maybe 50, 60, 70 miles to get in front of that eye wall. And that's some of the challenge right there because the weather starts to get worse and worse at the time as it gets closer. I've found myself many times moving my car in 70, 75, 80 miles an hour winds to get there. And then that kind of wind, your car is really rocking. Uh, to get myself out in front of that eye wall. Anyway, so I've been in the 15 hurricanes and it only counts if I'm in the eye wall and I've been in the eye wall all 15 of them, yeah. So there's the adrenaline rush that you get when you're chasing the storm, but there's also the terrible destruction that the storm brings. What are your thoughts on this part of the experience? 
Well, and that's the thing I always bring out in any interview. The first thing I always want people to know is this. I hope there's never, ever another hurricane ever again. I do, I do not like the destruction it causes. It, it, people lose not only their property, but some people lose their lives. I don't find thrill in that at all, period. Now that said, whether I don't like them or do, the hurricanes still come. And if they're gonna come, I'm gonna be there. Well, one of the things that I do is I, I, make, I give it a purpose. And so one of the things I do is get there early and I'll see people boarding up their homes, getting ready. I always make a point to help people. If someone looks like they need some help, yeah, I'll stop and I help them board their windows up and those kinds of things. So make myself useful. I happen to be an insurance agent and so I have the magnets on my side of my car purpose, well, two reasons. One is it gets me past the roadblocks for one. But the other thing is people see those magnets on my car and they'll wave me over and ask me questions about what happens after the storm? What do I do? And so I'm there to help them and encourage them to let them know that, you know what, it's going to be okay. Once it comes over, once the storm's done, we will come in, we'll get things back the way they were. So I feel like I'm, I'm making myself useful. One of the neat things about Hurricane Chase, and other than the fact of just the the dynamics of the storm is when you do get there early, I like to go to the grocery stores and the, uh, the low de Lowe's and Home Depot's because that's where people are going to get ready for the storm. They're there buying water, they're there buying the wood for their windows. And so there's just, it, it's interesting, there's a little bit of an excitement because everybody's anticipating what's coming. And so I watch just humanity do their thing and, and uh, they're all rushing and going and here and there. You know, and I help them load stuff up in their cars, the wood, the, you know, the, uh, the plywood for their windows. And, and, and so it's, uh, that's an interesting aspect of it as well. And the whole time I'm doing that, I'm tracking the storm because you know, while I'm watching this and while I'm doing this, I, I might see that the storm has gone either east or west or if on the east side, north or south. And so I have to keep an eye there so I make sure I'm positioning myself. I call it the linebacker drill. I try to get myself in front of that eye wall so I know that, I'm all, I, that I can try to get in front of that thing when it starts to come in. Yeah. Finally, what would you say to someone who's interested in getting into storm chasing? Well, well, the caution's always this. There's always a risk. And uh, we, I, I've, I've come close many, many times of getting in some really, really serious situations. So anybody who wants to chase a hurricane, they, they got to be ready to uh, risk a lot. Uh, other than that, I would just say try one out and see what, see what you think about it. I, my first one was, was Hurricane Andrew. I actually started on a big one. Uh, back in the early 1990s, and uh, after I did that one, I knew I was hooked. And so I've been to, I've only missed one since then, and that was because of my granddaughters uh, being born. Other than that, I've seen, I've seen everything that's, that's hit the continental United States. That said, I hope we never have another one again. And uh, I, I anticipate a very low hurricane season this year because we have that big high front sitting on top of us. Mm -hmm. That's great, Keep, keeps them off our shore, yeah. If anyone wants to learn more, how can they contact you? Uh, well, you can just always uh, shoot, call my cell phone. I'm always love, I love to talk to people about it and uh, they can call my cell. It's 972-978-4460. Not everyone is as adventurous as J. Lo, but some teens have some ideas of life after high school. Here's a look. I go to Jack Easton Academy for law enforcement. Oh, uh, so you want to be a law enforcement? Um, I'm probably going to go into the Army instead. Probably join the Army, the Marines. I want to do some kind of special forces, like uh, if I go to the Navy, I want to do like Navy SEAL. Where do you see yourself in five years? Do you, do you know? I have no idea. I see myself Hopefully not here though, because I like to go out and explore and I've been living here all my life. Being a nurse. Um, actor and dancer. A defense attorney. I want to become a lawyer and study law. I just want to help people. That's a, that's a noble cause. I want to do something with like special needs kids. What do you uh, plan on studying in college? Probably studying business and finance so I can get my, start my own business. What do you plan to study when you get to college? Law enforcement. I want to be able to like fix the justice system and like be able to make it right instead of putting innocent people in jail. I like the law. I like to see people behind bars, what they did bad. If I can do good, then I, I should. Speaking of the ocean, not every captain is out on stormy waters. Some of them are here in Irving making delicious sub sandwiches at Captain Nemo's Steak and Submarines. Let's take a look at this long-standing Irving staple. Captain Nemo's Steak and Submarines has been here for 45 years. Let's go see why. 
Captain Nemo's Staken Submarines was founded in Michigan by William and Faye Miller, who brought the business to Irving 45 years ago. It is currently owned by their son, Bill Miller, who along with his staff continues a tradition of making quality subs. We like to uh, guarantee that you're going to get the best possible uh, sandwich here. Captain Nemo's takes pride in making all their sandwiches with freshly made bread from scratch. We've got our turkey, our ham, chicken, and uh, a veggie option. Our most popular is definitely our steak and cheese. Oh, and corned beef, of course. Um, get a lot of uh, get a lot of uh, native northerners that come down for that. Longtime customer yes. Mike McAllister, who's been eating at Captain Nemo's for nearly 10 years, tells us his favorite order. A lot of people come here for the steak and cheese sandwich, but uh, the traditionals got a got a taste you just can't get it anywhere else, like Subway or you know the corporate-owned places like that. In addition to subs. They offer popular seasonal specialties. Once the fall rolls around, we have our uh, chili that the captain makes uh, himself. Um, that actually has a following in its own. We also, in the fall, uh, make our carrot cake from scratch. Um, and we have that around for a couple months. Most people say not enough. Being a part of Irving for so many years, Captain Nemo's enjoys giving back to the community. We uh, do participate in a lot of charities. Um, we, we give back to you know, a couple uh, church groups and some youth groups here and there. For more than three generations, Captain Nemo's continues to be a family tradition. We've got people that have been coming here for the 45 years that we've been open and uh, their kids come, their grandkids come, and when people move away, they always come back. For About Town, this is Tyler Rouse. Sub sandwiches aren't the only thing teens in Irving eat. Here are some of their favorite spots. What's your favorite place to eat in Irving? Uh, Chick-fil-A is always there. Chipotle's across the street. It's this little dessert place over there in the Irving Mall. It used to be Crystal's. Boston Market's right there too. I think one of the places I go here a lot is probably CeCe's Pizza. I'm going to say Joe's because Joe's is like the old classic shop. The coffee is a lot, but it feels comfortable. There's In-N-Out, there's Smash Burgers. Razzles. Griffs. Five Guys, uh, Bread Zeppelin. There's, there's a lot of places to eat, yeah. The 18th annual Art Connection Members Show highlights our calendar of events this week. The exhibit continues through August 18th in the Irving Art Center Main Gallery. Here's a look at the work of local artists and a list of other creative things to do about town. And here are some other ways to stay cool happening about town. The next Poolside Teen Jam is Saturday, August 4th from 7 to 11 p.m. at the West Irving Aquatic Center. Visit the Parks and Recreation page at cityofirving.org for more information. 
If the acting bug is in your system, check out the Teen Scene Theater Camp at the Irving Art Center. It runs August 6th through 10th and concludes with a fully staged production on that Friday at 6.30 p.m. Call 972-252-ARTS for details. If you're at least 15 years old, you can learn skills that will help you save lives at the Red Cross Lifeguard class. The next classes on the schedule are August 16th through 18th at the North Lake College Natatorium. To learn more, call 469-446-0201. The South Irving Library is hosting a back-to-school owl party on Friday, August 17th from 7 to 10 p.m. as part of their Friday night library series. To learn more, call 972-721-2606. And that wraps up this edition of About Town. Thanks for joining us. Please be sure to tune in next time for a look at the one-act play competition. We'll also take a look at RBR Music School and the Art Connection member show. We'll leave you tonight with a look back at Aishi Guha in performance at this year's Irving's Got Talent. For About Town, I'm Marshall Baldwin. And I'm Tyler Rouse. Have a great evening. About Town. <laughs>